What's up guys, my name is Eyal and today I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of my new extension, Taxon. Taxon is an extension that lets you control groups of layers based on their attributes, for example, type, name, label color, etc. So let me show you how it works with a basic example. Let's choose shape layers and select them. The UI includes three parts, selector buttons, which select layers based on their attributes, action buttons, which perform actions on the selected layers, and some text on the bottom to let the user know how many layers are matching in the current composition. Now, these tabs at the top are there to split the selector buttons into groups. Currently, we are on the type tab, where you can select buttons based on their type, for example, shape, as we just saw, solid, text layers, and so on. We also have the name tab, where you can select layers based on their name. So if, for example, I type shape, you can see I can select layers that have the word shape in them. So if, for example, I deselect them, every layer with the word shape in its name is deselected. Now let's move on to the attributes tab. In the attributes tab, you can select layers based on attributes like keyframes, solo, if the layer is locked, visible, if it's apparent, and so on. The label color and blend mode are pretty self-explanatory. You can select layers based on the label of the layer and the blend mode of the layer. Now, what if, for example, you want to select both text layers and layers with a red label at the same time? By default, when navigating to a different tab, all buttons are deselected. To change this, you can toggle the lock selectors option in the context menu by right-clicking the panel now, with, the, with this option enabled, you can use selectors from different tabs at the same time. Now you can see both layers with the red label and text layers are selected. Let's deselect them. Another feature is sync panel. If, for example, I choose no layers and change the number of no layers from inside the panel, for example, by duplicating them, you can see the text updates automatically. But if I change the number of no layers from outside the panel, while the selector is active, you can see the text won't update. You can fix that by clicking on Sync Panel. So that's it for the panel. Now let's take a look at the settings window. I'll open it by clicking on Settings from the context menu. Now you can see there are quite a lot of settings here, so I'll try to make it as short as possible. With these checkboxes, you can toggle the visibility of each tab in the panel. So for example, if I uncheck name and blend mode, then save the settings, you can see these tabs are not showing anymore. This select all selector buttons after action is executed. If I check this and save the settings, now when I check some selectors and execute an action on them, they will get deselected. And again, next up is deselect all selector buttons when window loses focus. By default, if I select some selectors and move to a different window, they will remain active. To change this, you can check this option. And again, when I select some selectors and now when I move to a different tab, they will get deselected. Show matching layers text. If you disable this option, the text on the bottom will not show anymore. Also, notice that you get the same information on the info panel, no matter if the setting is disabled or enabled. Sync panel on window hover is probably my favorite setting. Let's check it. Now, for example, if I select shape layers and change the number of shape layers in the composition from outside the panel, for example, let's duplicate it a couple of times. Now, notice that when I hover over the panel, the text will update automatically without having to click on Sync Panel. And lastly, Enable Tooltips is for whether or not you want to enable these tooltips next to every button. In the Appearance tab, we can change the theme and the tabs display. For the theme, let's choose yellow. But what does tabs display actually mean? By default, the tabs display will change depending on the window size. If there is enough space, it will display like so, and if there isn't, it will display as a side menu. 
In the side menu, you can see the tabs and some other options we saw before, such as settings, reloading the panel, syncing the panel, and toggling lock selectors. This is the responsive option. The compact option means the tabs will always be in the side menu, no matter how big the window is. Let's toggle it and see what it looks like. In the selectors tab, you can decide which selectors you want to include for each tab. So, for example, in the type tab, I can deselect some selectors. And of course, I can do the same for attributes, label color, and blend mode. Now, you can see by default, some of the blend modes are deselected simply because they take up too much space in the panel. Now, I can save. And you can see the type tab changed accordingly. Now, the actions tab is exactly the same as the selectors tab, but for action buttons. There are also some actions that are not included in the panel by default, and these allow you to label the selected layers with the color of the button. So let's add some of those to the panel and remove some of the default ones, save our settings, and you can see the changes made to the panel. Now let's, for example, select shape layers and label them yellow, and you can see how it works. Now moving on to the default action tab, as the description says, when default action is enabled, the action will be executed every time a selector is clicked and all action buttons won't be visible in the panel. So what does it actually look like? Let's enable default action and I'll stick with the default option, which is select. Save my settings. And first of all, you can see all action buttons are gone. And every time I click on a selector, for example, shape layers, the default action will be executed. Next up is custom tab, where we can create new custom tabs with all the selectors we've seen so far. Let's see how it works. First of all, we're prompted to choose a name for a new tab. Uh, let's say I'm creating a tab for a 2D workflow, so I'll call it 2D. Next, we need to choose the selectors we want to have in our new tab. So I'll select shape, solid, visible layers, text layers, and some label colors and continue. Now we can see our name for the new tab and the selectors. Let's click on confirm. And now you can see there is a list of our new custom tabs. We can rename them and delete them. I'm going to cancel that. And now if I save my settings, you can see here's my new custom tab called 2D and all the selectors are here and it works exactly the same as all the other tabs we've seen before. I can use it exactly in the same way and I can also toggle its visibility and edit its selectors. Lastly, there is a help tab where you can find a short description for every button in the panel. So for example, under type, you can find all the buttons of the type tab. So that's it. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching.